Uh, hey everyone, welcome to the Good News Podcast. And today we have on a guest whose name is Day Campbell. Uh, some of you may know Day as Day the Poet because that's what she does. She does spoken word. That's how uh, I actually met Day uh, through our good friend Jesse Jones. Day uh, did a did a spoken word for us at a, at a table of reconciliation event that we had. It was a it was a spoken word that was that was just it was it was riveting. It it, it moved us, and uh, you could see as as Day says actually in this interview, you, you could you could see that it's not just what she's saying, but it's it's who she is. That, that's what I love for you to pay attention in this conversation. Just just check out the the, the way that that this this beautiful person um, lives her life. Day is thoughtful. She's reflective. She's caring. She's got a depth about her. She's also a ton of fun. So, friends, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Fast your seatbelts. Hang on. This is a good one. Let's dive in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Good News Podcast. And today we have, honestly, this is a new friend, uh, but one of my favorite people. Uh, I'm just so Excited to share this conversation with you and, and excited for you to meet Day Campbell, uh, just an amazing individual who I, as I said, I've been so blessed to get to know and look forward to getting to know more. Uh, Day, yeah, thanks so much for being on the Good News Podcast uh, today. Yeah. Amy, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. Yeah. Oh, well, I, we, you know, we've had we've had several conversations we over have. the last six to eight months as we've got to know each other and do some work together. And no, I really mean, I, I just I love who you are. I love how you roll. I love what's going on. And I, I just can't wait for other people to get to hear that as well as well today. So thank you. Oh, you're so so welcome. So why don't we jump in? Like you have a very unique role, uh, work yes. that you do, being a, a creative, a poet, a writer, a performer. Mm -hmm. um, love to hear a bit on how how that happened and and what what that's like for you. So I would say I've always been super creatively inclined since I've been a kid. I was always super fascinated by the movies that my mom would show me, things that she would watch, things she'd participate in. My mother was involved in a dance company, so mm. I would often be at a lot of her practices watching her and seeing different things that she'd be involved in. She was also a poet, so I got to see that from her too. And I think it really inspired me and instilled a great sense of self and purpose in me as I grew older mm. over the years. Mm. Mm. Amazing. So um, what was that process like? Because it's one thing, you know, uh, to, to see that happening growing up mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, sometimes you hear stories about, you know, I, I played teacher when I was a kid because my mom yeah. was a teacher, you know, sort, <laughs> sort of thing. So to have the idea to, 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 be, to be exposed to, to, to you know, the, yeah, the performance and writing and that, that kind of thing, um, dance, theater, but what was the process like then to go from that passion and interest to mm -hmm. where you you know you you've made this your your life this is your livelihood this is your the work that you do um how did yeah how did that process go what was that like i think the segue from it being my interest and hobby from it being my life and career really started to happen when i was in high school and i was an athlete in high school and I played a lot of sports. I played football, volleyball. I danced competitively. I did wrestling mm. for many years. Um, when I was in grade 11, I got injured wrestling. Mm. And I was super devastated because it made everything else extremely hard too. I couldn't play football anymore. I couldn't dance anymore. And I kind of fell into a bit of a depressive state. And I remember that my mom would always share her journal entries with me growing up. So I thought, okay, let me just start writing about it. Because at that mm. point in time, my head became super busy. I was like, everywhere I'd go, it's like I was narrating things. And I was like, let me just write these things down and maybe mm -hmm. we can make sense of this all and possibly create something interesting. So I started writing when I was in high school. And when I realized that academics were not gonna be a route that I was gonna be really successful at, I ended up going to my guidance counselor to explain to him my frustrations. And he suggested that I joined this program that the TDSB was running called SWAC. This program allowed me to attend college, take college courses, as well as be involved in an internship for half of the day. So I ended up doing that and I got a really cool internship at a design museum downtown Toronto. Wow. It's called Design Exchange. It's um, at the bottom floor of the old Toronto Stock Exchange building. Mm. So I ended up working there. I meet a bunch of other artists who wow. work there. I'm teaching workshops um, for different organizations like CAMH. I'm sharing poetry slowly. And um, some of the older people that were working there were like, hey, we, we do this like open mic 
series, you should come and share your poetry. And I've never shared it before. And I was just like, really? And they were like, yeah, you can just come and read it. You don't have to memorize it or anything. Just come and read it if you want. It's really chill. So I went to one of their events and I read poetry for the first time. I had everybody sit down with me in a circle because I was super nervous to be standing okay. and have everyone be standing and like not be we're able to see everyone. We're going to chill this out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, hey, can everyone like just sit? We can make it just chill. Like, you know, we're just yeah. friends hanging out. Yeah. And I shared my first poetry piece with them and everyone was like super supportive and they were just so helpful. And they made me feel really confident that this could be something that would be a viable means of work for me. Mm. And knowing that my mother had done it before, I felt that it definitely was something that I was willing to carry on into the mm, future. Amazing, man. Yeah. Do you remember what that first piece was that you shared with them? I don't even know. Okay. Oh my yeah. God, it's probably written somewhere. Yeah. I don't yeah. know it off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, that's cool though. Right? <laughs> so it's interesting to me, um, the the people that were involved in in you getting to where you are, like, like yeah. your mom sharing her journal, mm -hmm. that's interesting to me because mm -hmm. sometimes those are private things. Yeah. And for her to, yeah, to have the... Um, yeah, the courage to share that, the the the, the relationship that you obviously have, you know, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, that's really yeah. awesome. The intimacy of sharing something yeah. so so personal, that, yeah. that's really cool. Often mm. it was, um, I remember being like six, I think it was like five or six. I remember telling her something one day and her asking me, is it okay if I write this in my journal? And I was like, hmm. what do you mean? Sure. <laughs> I yeah. don't know why she wanted to write it Let me down. see this journal. <laughs> but I was like, sure. So she wrote it down and I forgot about it. Years later, she shared it with me and she was actually having a conversation with me about my relationship with my father at the time. I didn't grow up with my dad, my mom being married and in the same household. Mm. I would see my dad on special occasions and sometimes, and um, she ended up asking me like, what is it that you want to communicate to your dad? Like, what is it that you would like him to know if you could let him know anything, you mm -hmm. know, about the experience you're having right now growing up without him being present in the home all the time? And I was just like, nothing. I just want him to come around. I want him to want to be here. I want it to be something not that I feel like I have to force. I want him to genuinely want it. And that will make me feel mm. loved. That's what I told her wow. at five or six. Wow. And she read this back to me and I was just like, Oh my gosh, we've but, been doing this, wow. <laughs> haven't we? And she was like, yeah, I thought it was extremely profound. <laughs> wow, at five or six so, years old. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I mean, my observation, <laughs> reflection on that would be that that, that God had given you, has, has given you a gift and you've, you've always had it. And, and wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. I was also thinking about this teacher that recommended this program, you know, and I yeah. think, right? Um, I think sometimes... Uh, let's face let's face it teachers it can be a really tough job and and sometimes i i live my wife's a teacher and mm -hmm. so i know this that sometimes i wonder you know do you make any difference does it matter what you do but but man when people do whatever job they do when they do it well when they do it with excellence when they do it with care and heart mm -hmm. eh? like it just seems i hear yeah. that in that story like, like this individual took the time to obviously be thinking about your life um, yeah. to, to suggest something yeah. that actually not only worked out, but led to your your path in life it right now. It was the biggest, I always look back at that moment. I honestly have to thank him, Mr. Arnott, my guidance counselor. Right on. And he, I remember like going to his office one day after I had sat through an entire chemistry test because I was convinced I was going to study kinesiology because that's what all the athletes do. We go to <laughs> study kinesiology, yeah. we become sports psychologists or personal trainers or fitness coaches, gym teachers, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to do that. That's what yeah. the athletes do. And I sat through an entire chemistry test that day and cried because I did not know what was going on. I was mm. completely withdrawn from school. I didn't feel like I was able to show my best self in the science and math courses. So he ended up looking at my report card and he was like, it seems like you have perfect grades in all of the arts courses, language arts, dance, great attendance, for personal fitness, you're consistently meeting all of your goals. You have great extracurricular, extracurricular mm -hmm. participation. Um, I played every sport that I could fit in my schedule. And he was like, I think you need something more hands-on and a bit faster paced. Um, maybe some time to explore some new things. So when I went to college, I ended up studying intro to psychology, which I feel like was personally more for me than it was for me to really take mm. and turn into any sort of career. I ended up learning so much about myself wow. in that course wow. and about how different people's brains are wired and you know how we form habits mm -hmm. how we create ourselves mm -hmm. which ended up becoming a very reoccurring theme in a lot of my work 
the art of self-actualization, creating yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Well, so, so um, does he know what you're doing now? Is oh there my any gosh, connection with I him? have seen him. I saw him last when my brother was in high school because my brother actually ended up running into the same problems I was. And Mr. Arnup so happened to also be his assigned ground guidance counselor. Oh, nice, nice. So I ended up going to school one day to pick up my brother. And he was like, of course you're Ari's sister. And I was like, yep. <laughs> Apple doesn't far far, you know? So, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's I'm, cool. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> so the, the work that you do, um, you, the messages that you communicate through, through your poetry mm-hmm. and song and art, um, my sense is it's it's very intentional. Like mm-hmm. that you 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 really do work hard to offer a message that's that's significant. Um, yeah, what 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 goes behind um, the messaging that you're trying to communicate? Where, where, where does it come from? What would be some of the main messages that, that you hope people do here in the midst yeah. of the the creative way that you're communicating it? To restate what I said before, um, honestly, the ability to take nothing and make something Mm. is the ultimate artistic expression in my eyes Mm. to be able to have a thought and turn it into a material thing and then share it with other people and have them understand it and also benefit from it that is why i do any of this i would love to be able to look back at the work that i've created over the years when i'm much older and be inspired by it i find that many times that i do read my old journals. I'm just like, you didn't even know what you were saying at the time. And I usually don't end up writing what I say when I write it. I'm like, okay, that's nothing. Throw it away. Mm. And when I go back and read it, I'm like, oh my gosh, you Mm. wrote this for yourself in the future. Not you Mm. right now, but for you that was going to need it later and didn't Mm. even know. Mm. And I don't even know how I create these things sometimes. It's Mm. honestly a bit of a trance and things just come to me. I feel like divinely so, definitely from source. I feel very much so plugged into that and Mm. plugged into the messaging. And I found so many parallels between the things that I find myself writing and the stories that I was read growing up, like in Sunday school. Mm, It's just so interesting to see Mm. how all these things have come together and helped me grow and create myself. Mm, mm, That's, uh, uh, yeah. um, I love the term divinely sourced, man. That's really that's really cool to me. I'd love to explore that a, a little bit. You, you know, certainly my beliefs would be that, yeah, God is creator and every, every <laughs> part of the creative process is going to involve our creator, you know? And, yeah. and so when you talk about being divinely sourced, yeah, just, just love to hear a bit more what, what that means for you. And even, I don't know if any examples come to mind where yeah, I think back that one, that one, that was <laughs> divinely sourced. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel as though it's, I'm going to use my words wisely. I've been a stubborn person (laughs) most of my life. Some of us like to say dedicated. My dad or mom might say stubborn. (laughs) Um, I've been extremely steadfast in what it is that I want. Sometimes I don't see the negative repercussions that come with getting it your way all the time. Mm. And I feel that I'm going to say Day the Poet because it sometimes does feel like another person. Okay. Day the Poet is this person that really guides me on the right path mm. and catches me and helps me stay on the straight and narrow. Mm. So when I say divinely sourced, I feel that it's really just me being attached to my destiny, me seeing my future self mm. clearly and being able to reverse engineer myself into that state mm. where all of my dreams and desires and fantasies and you know are are living mm. mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sounds like a very reflective mm-hmm. um uh listening almost disciplined a little bit pro- yeah. process to be able to get to that it is i don't get to write what i want to write i get to write yeah. what i'm supposed to write mm. Mm. i sometimes i wish i could write a nice pop song some days i do okay <laughs> <laughs> but most days it's like no you're going to write the rules in which we will live by. Mm. You're going to write things that we need to remember mm. on the really, really hard days. You're going to write things that are going to help your siblings along the way, mm. help your parents understand you and themselves more mm. and glorify God. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very cool. You know what's, what's very, I'm curious about this, is I think people think about creatives you know, and, and the creative process that it would be this very um, 
undisciplined, loosey goosey life, right? Where oh, I want to feel like doing something well, but I can't if I don't, and mm-hmm. you know, um, and and maybe some do, you know, run run like that. Um, what I know from the conversation you and I have had is, mm-hmm. I see you as a very disciplined person. I mean, you've yeah. mentioned that you you you're in writing camp right now. And that's, yeah. that's there's no one taking you to camp each day. No. You, you were taking yourself to writing yes. camp, disciplining <laughs> yourself to sit down. Uh, my guess is whether you feel like it or not, mm-hmm. um, you're exercising regularly, taking care of mm-hmm. yourself, and yeah. and that takes discipline. Yeah. So, can you share a little bit on how discipline? And intentionality, even in your scheduling, your day-to-day scheduling, works out for you as part of this life that you're living and what you're mm-hmm. creating and how that actually leads to where you need to get to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I honestly think that greatness happens when preparedness meets opportunity. Nice. I don't know when I'm going to get to work. I'm not in control of that. All I can hope is that I'm ready with something to share when the opportunity comes to share something, mm. right? So... The way I see it is me not knowing when things are going to pop up. All I have to do is be ready, right? Mm. I don't know when I'm going to get called, but I got to make sure my teeth are brushed, hair is combed, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're ready to go, Mm. right? And we don't know what we're going to be facing when we get out there. So we want to be in great shape to have the stamina and the strength to sustain whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Good for you. I love that. (laughs) Thank you. Greatness is when preparedness meets opportunity. Yeah. That's, that is quotable. 100%. 100%. You heard it right here. Day 100%. camp on the Good News blog. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, what does your what does what does a typical day look like for you? Uh, the, 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 I'd love to, love to hear that. A typical day, I wake up. Sometimes I go to sleep really late. So last night, for example, I mentioned to you I was working on something mm. that I have to get ready for something I'm working on in the future. And I stayed up all night until about 6 a.m. this morning. No. Because I got the writing energy at around 3 a.m. And then once you got it, you can't let it go. Okay. I grabbed hold of it and I was like, this is time to go to bed. And I was like, but we feel amazing right now, don't we? And sometimes it it looks like that. Sometimes I go to bed at 9, sometimes I go to bed at 6 a.m. Okay. And I might, you know, take a little nap until 10 a.m. and then wake up again. I have a bit of a philosopher's schedule. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No, no. Um, Many philosophers have been noted to sleep in intervals and- eat in intervals. Okay. They simply do, they make their scheduling so that it is aligned with when inspiration can strike. Mm. Inspiration is set to strike for most people in between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. Mm. Why? Because your hormones are going crazy at that time, creating mm. human growth hormone, helping your body repair things. If you choose to stay awake, you'll be extremely inspired mm. with that available energy. So sometimes I choose to I like to say biohack and just okay. ride it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am and, young, so I can afford do... to miss some sleep. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the better shape you're in, the less sleep you need to repair also okay. too. So okay. it kind of all so The physical helps health that you're working on, it helps balance that out a, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Need yeah. to do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So then if you have a night like that, yeah, then, then you must have to sleep a good part of the next day. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or in intervals, I might yeah. like still want to enjoy the morning. So I might fall asleep at like this morning. I fell asleep at seven 40. I woke up at nine 40 after we're done this, I'm going to take a nap okay. this evening and I'll probably yeah. wake up again, have dinner and then go to sleep again yeah. early to reset properly to have a proper day the next yeah. day. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's, it's math. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, very... No, no, I, 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 no, I, I hear you. Like I, I've heard, I've heard of this. I didn't know what, the, the, I hadn't heard it called that. Uh, what do you call it? Philosoph- the philosopher's schedule. Philosopher's schedule. Yeah. 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 There's but, uh, tons of videos. Jim on Collins it. wrote good to great. I heard him on a podcast uh, not so long ago and he, he talked about the perfect schedule for him, um, which for him was when no one else is around because when his family's around, it just, it wasn't practical to do this, but yep. he would get up at three and he'd have a couple hours of right. He's a writer, author uh, on leadership and things like that. So he, he, he'd write for a few hours, go back to bed, mm-hmm. get up and do it again, and then do the same thing again. And he said, you know how you get up in the morning and you feel fresh? He goes, I get three of those. Like, yeah. He's kind of like, okay, exactly. that makes sense. I get it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it can be very socially isolating. That's probably one of the downsides of it, me not being available to attend the majority of social events that I'd like to attend, but I pick and choose like what's really important. Mm-hmm. I've stopped attending things that I haven't been personally invited to. I might like to go to that, but 
nobody needs me there. So mm. I don't have to be there. Okay. okay. Right. If it's my friend's birthday, they've sent me an invitation. I will make it a priority to be at that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's your opening night of this. I'll make it a priority to be at that. But mm. I don't need to go to all of the concerts. I don't need okay. to go yeah. to, you know, all of the parties or yeah. the festivals. Yeah. I don't have yeah. to do that because I'm creating something so beautiful for myself that I honestly find it more enjoyable mm. mm-hmm. than the, the, you know, when you go out and you're like, I hope it's a good night, mm-hmm. but there's so many factors that are out of your control yeah. as to whether yeah. or not it's going to be a good night. Yeah. When I'm writing, when I create that time, I'm like, I know it's going to be good. And I yeah. know it's going to be very gratifying. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I, I think we call that focus. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, but, but you've got, God has blessed you with something that is worthy of focusing on where you feel it's productive and enjoy. It sounds like you enjoy the yeah. process of writing, which is really cool. Like mm-hmm. that's so awesome. Cause I, I got it. So, cause, so you can enjoy something, but it can still be challenging. Right. So yes. yeah. Cause I got to think that, that mm-hmm. maybe you talk about the challenges of writing mm-hmm. because I, I suspect even though the end product you know, is amazing mm-hmm. and you overall love the process, I suspect there's some challenges along along the yeah. way. What are some of the challenges for you when it comes to the, the whole process of, of creating and, and writing? Probably one of the main things might be getting out of your own way um, mm. and just making it. I think um, Michael Jackson said this really well. He was like, when he gets his burst of inf- inspiration, he has to get up and do it or else Prince might make the song. <laughs> it's true. It's mm. very like the mm. fine line between a Prince song and a Michael mm. Jackson mm. song. Mm. And not that I'm like, oh, I'm in constant competition with others. Like, no, it's me. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know that the human psychology naturally has a part wired into it that wants to protect you and preserve your energy reserves. So mm. you're actually going to want to do less than you can do naturally, just as a safety mechanism that's built into you. So if I push that aside, like, and do a really good job of pushing it aside, I can make some really amazing things. So I've just had to like really stick with it. It it becomes hard when I don't like what I'm making. It becomes hard when I'm not impressed with myself. I think I'm in a season right now of not feeling impressed with myself, funny enough. Mm. Um, <laughs> I've just not written anything in a while that I've been like, aha. Mm. And sometimes the aha comes later after you've performed it a few times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sometimes the aha is just for others and not for you. Yeah. So it's really, it's difficult. You have to really just be consistent with it and mm-hmm. know that, all of the things that you've written down that you want will get checked off at different times. Mm. And I make goals. I'm like, I'd love to have a poem in a campaign. I'd love to have this printed there. I'd love to have involvement in this type of project. And like at some point, if I'm consistently creating, these things are going to get checked off the list, but I'm not in control of saying this one is for this or Mm. that one is for that. Mm -hmm. It gets chosen and I don't get to pick when it gets written or who it gets given to. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I love I love that you you have goals as far as hey I'd I'd love to have some of my poetry mm-hmm. here and here and here that's really the purposefulness mm-hmm. behind what you do mm-hmm. is 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 really I, I really appreciate that and respect yeah. that like that's very very cool to me um, when you when you say get get out of my own way uh, yeah that's a big statement um, and I think people <laughs> you know we 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 I think all probably struggle for being honest with getting out of our own way. What For you, what does that mean? What are some of the things that get in the way of you doing what you want to do? Probably my hyperactivity. Um, what day is it today? September 12th. On September 1st of 2023, I was actually officially diagnosed with severe ADHD. And hmm. I've actually lived with it for all of my life. My behavior hasn't changed. But I'm finding the older I've gotten and the more goals I create for myself, the more it's become a problem. Mm. So I've really had to just be like, listen, is it going to be so much worse to have a bit of a quieter mind and get more done or have all the fun you want to have in your head all Mm. the time and see things passing you by that you were supposed to be on top of? Mm. So I've had to really, like, that was an example. I didn't I didn't like the idea of mm. taking pills every day. And I don't take them every day. Mm. But mm-hmm. something, like, I feel like I created a bunch of ideas that were going to, you know, I was going to roadblock myself. Oh, no, but we can't we can't get a diagnosis because then we'll have to take pills every day. And then um, we, might, we might get depressed. And then mm. um, we might not create as much. And we'll be boring. And mm. no, why don't you just try it? Mm. Just try it. 
Mm. You know, my doctor gave me a trial dose. Okay. I'm just trying it. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. I'm developing a rhythm that works within my other rhythms that I figured out that work. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, to help myself stay on top of the things that I want to do and also just still feel good about myself, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There's these very real things that are part of, because when you, when you sit down, you, if you get distracted, that's going to, that's a barrier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What's your environment like when you sit down to write? I like writing outside. Outside, okay. If I'm like during the summer, as much as I can write outside, I love writing outside. Mm -hmm. I like finding a, a picnic bench, the table, nice. chair, sitting in the sun. I feel like that's when I get the most source energy. Yeah. Because I feel like super charged up. You're getting vitamin D, you're getting all these yeah. positive hormones coming into your body. I feel good. Um, funny enough, too, like when I'm having nights out with my friends, like my friends are having like a games night or maybe out watching a show, I get inspiration at those times, too. And when I was younger, I used to actually always have a journal on me mm. and like I would feel no ways about just pulling it out and sitting down and just starting to write. And my friends understood that's just her. Nice. The older I've gotten, the less comfortable I felt doing it. I tried doing it a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, this is weird. So I'll just pull out my phone sometimes, but then I don't want others to think that I'm on my phone. Mm. So it's like, I feel like pulling out the journal and the pen is actually a bit more intentional sure. and clear. It's yeah. like, I am writing. This is different. Yeah. It's yeah. different. I'm not like being distracted on Instagram or ignoring you like i'm fully listening yeah um and another thing too realizing that i have adhd means i have varied attention spans like mm. i can focus on this and that at the same time mm. which is starting to feel like a bit of a superpower <laughs> i honestly nice. like it oh yeah i like it i don't see any of these things as disorders or diseases i see them as mm. they're my gifts also mm -hmm. the same with the poetry i just have to learn how to use them mm -hmm. and not let them use me mm. right mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So when it comes to you, to your poetry, do you, do you have like a, a favorite piece that you've done over the years or, or yeah, what, what are some that you're most uh, grateful for, proud of? I have a piece that I have been sharing a lot recently. It's called Daydreams, D-A-E, mm. Dreams. Mm. And this piece encompasses the, what we've been talking about, the struggle of, you know, being in your own way not knowing what you want to do, feeling like you're losing yourself in creating, um, questioning your purpose, but then bringing yourself back to it. I have created a um, kind of a routine for when I do feel like I'm a bit like, I don't know who I am because I get that feeling quite often because mm. it's like at the end of the day, it's me that has to validate me. I'm not employed by anyone. I don't, mm. I don't go to an office every day. I have mm -hmm. to literally wake up and feel validated in that this is my purpose. This is my job. Mm. I am employed by self, mm -hmm. you know, to do this work. Right on, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been daydreams, you know. I think I've shared, I shared that one with you, yeah. Mm. She's voguing, snake owning, French speaking, butt kicking. She's awesome. She's confident in who she is, not just what she does. There's a difference between who you are and what you do. Mm. It's easy to confuse the two, right? That piece, yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome. Oh, that is so yeah. cool. That is so cool. I love that you just... <laughs> <laughs> Pull that out. That's awesome. Um, what What are you excited about as far as as far as the? And thanks for for giving us that little gift, that little taste. Like I, I just want to like, what are, what are you doing this? I want to come and watch and experience it. And yeah. you know, yeah. So maybe that leads into like, what are you excited about as far as what's coming up? What's next for you? I'm excited mm -hmm. right now to plan some more musical shows. Recently, you know, I've been working with the Nightlight Band. Yeah. And I've tried out something a bit more musical recently um, at a recent show, Flavors and Vibes, here in Brampton, and I'm really interested to just create more things that I can do melodic style poetry over. Earlier on this year, I learned that spoken word is a category at the Grammys that doesn't get aired on TV. Really? One of my friends actually sent me um, the ceremony this year and they were like, oh, you've never seen this before. And I was like, I've never seen this before because mm. I only ever see what's aired on of TV. Of course, yeah. And um, I was super inspired by that to try and create a an entirely spoken word album, I guess. Yeah, it has to be mainly structured and spoken word. So right now I'm just curious with playing around with music that still keeps what, I, what I'm doing very much so poetry, very much so spoken word. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just interested to create like a really cool, maybe like 45 minute set that I can do. Oh my goodness. Real like jazz girl vibes, yeah. I just think <laughs> that would be so cool. Please, uh, 
Uh, I'll buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to come. You'll um, be there. <laughs> the Grammy thing. Like, is that, why not, eh? Yeah. I'll yeah. put my sights on that. Okay. Why not? That's what, that's what it sounds why like. not? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah. I think it, I think it'd be a cool thing to try for. Yeah. For sure. And uh, now that I know it exists, and I feel like it's so funny. Like, this always happens to me. Like, I'll decide I really like something or that I want to do something. And then all these spaces for it are magically created. Mm. Oh, you could put it here and you could put it here too. And oh, we also like it over here too. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool the way that works, <laughs> eh? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. yeah I, God's always at work, that whole divinely sourced. And then you also play your part. You know, we do our part. And I just feel like, you know, you're, you're living into your part, which mm -hmm. is like, and set you up for some some great possibilities yeah. for the future. Really excited for you today and grateful Thank for you. you. Um, let's end with a little good news podcast rapid fire here, if okay. I could. So the best <laughs> thing going on in your in your home, in your family these days? Growing closer to my grandmother, mm. learning from her stories and her experiences and having her appreciate my art um, quickly. One of the best yeah. things about becoming successful at this has, has been able to like... Um, show her news clippings or things on TV that mm. she can actually relate to. Because whenever I perform at poetry bars or events, she doesn't, she can't come sure. to those really. Yeah. She's like, yeah. it's not really her scene, but yeah. having it be on the news or in publications that she reads and yeah. looks at has really been yeah. super validating <laughs> it, for me. It, it, it is real. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, she yeah, like yeah. gets it now. Yeah, so that's yeah. been something oh, super exciting happening for I, me. I could, I could hear the love that you have for your grandma too. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Best thing going on in your neighborhood, in your community. My neighborhood and my community... Probably, hmm. I'm just loving to see how everyone's really banding together right now, especially that we're going into such economically tough times. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people really figure out ways to help others, involve others, and work with others mm. um, in regards to what it is they do. I'm seeing a lot more of a social economy develop, mm. and I think that's super beautiful. Mm -hmm. Coming together, collaborative, yeah. helping yeah. each other. That's awesome. And that may be sliding to the last question. Best thing going on in the world? Best thing going on in the world? I think it's probably the fact that now more than ever, anything goes. I'm seeing so many different styles of music fused together. I'm seeing so many different ways to express yourself through fashion and art pop up now that we've integrated AI mm -hmm. into our creation process, mm. as well as our businesses. I'm just seeing endless possibilities. Mm. I'm seeing that anything you want can probably happen mm, at this time. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's very exciting. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks, yeah. Day. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, really, Jamie. Really appreciate Love talking you. talking to you. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel exactly <laughs> the same. Love to say a prayer for you before we close. Thank cool, you. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, thank you so much for this beautiful person, um, this uh, amazing individual whom you are clearly working with. And thank you for that divine source that you are for, for Day. I love the way that she listens so deeply to, to her life, to life around her, to those she loves, and uh, just continue to bless her with, with discipline and, and, and consistency and creativity and, and grace and rest and space and all those things. May she absolutely know that she is loved and adored by you, that she has an incredible future ahead and that she would enjoy, even, even through the challenge, that you would give her joy to continue to, to, to this path that you, you've got her on. Thank you for today, for the inspiration of this conversation. We just entrust it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank Amen. You. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Day. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today on the Good News Podcast. I certainly hope that you have been just as as enamored with this conversation as I have. And uh, looking forward, as always, to, to being with you again. And thanks for being a part of the Good News Podcast family. God bless you. Bye. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I love I love that, that line that, that Day said, that greatness is when pre preparedness and opportunity meet, and and uh, you know just isn't isn't that true that uh, we we never know when when something's going to work out. That, that's that's happening in in, in Day's life. You, you just hear it in in her journey, uh, the way God worked through through her mom sharing her journal and, and through a through a guidance counselor at, at, at school, just making a suggestion on, on what they thought would be a great next step for, for day. So just 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 love. Um, when we do our part, it's, a, it's amazing. Uh, God's up to something where things can come together in, in really in really significant ways. And we, we hear that in, in day's life. I, I, I hope that that can happen for you, whatever's going on in your life, that this, this story gave you hope 
um, that it inspired you that uh, sometimes you just never know what one step that you take will, will lead to. Uh, also, you know, let's not miss the way that, that God works through people, everyday people. Uh, as we mentioned this conversation, uh, people like, like teachers who sometimes wonder if what they do matters. But man, one suggestion, one, one caring thought or, or uh, supportive advice or encouragement, it, it, can, it can change someone's life. And, and that certainly happened in, in Day's life. The smile on her face as she talked about uh, that, that guidance teacher that gave her some wisdom and, and advice and, and, and recommendations that helped lead her to where she is today. So, wow, lots of great stuff here. Hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, we uh, we so appreciate you being a part of the Good News Podcast family. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Good News with Jamie Holtham. You can subscribe as well so you get to know whenever a new episode is released. We uh, are grateful for this time that we get together and for this good news that we get to both receive and share. God bless you and be with you and can't wait to see you again real soon.